I think there's there's two kind of main principles that I would look at that really make solar make a lot of sense. Um, the first one is control. Um, and what we talked about, about control and compounding. Uh, in California, for example, uh, PG&E is, a, is an electric company. Um, their rates went up by 16% last year on top of 12% the year before, on top of 12% the year before, which means it's eating away at dollars that you never get access to ever again, right? The, the purchasing power and the investment power of those dollars are gone forever. And so you're on the wrong end of compounding. And so if all the only thing you were able to do was to say, let's just lock in this rate. If you think about what you paid 10 years ago, lock in that rate, right? You would be significantly better off in 10, 20, 30 years from now because you've been able to lock in that rate. This is Better Wealth with Caleb Williams. Hey everybody, it's Caleb Williams here, and I got a really special guest for you. I got connected with Jimmy uh, about a couple of weeks ago, and from a mutual friend of ours, J, J. Lowe, or Jason Jason Lowe. I know I have a lot of my listeners love what he's up to. And you, you number one, thank you for being on the show, but you're going to talk about all the benefits of solar. You've actually made a domain just for my audience. It's, it's bankwithsolar.com, and you'll definitely want to star that um, because... I think solar definitely is an amazing uh, thing to learn about. I think for many people it can save them a lot of money. I think there's special tax advantages going on. And what makes you so interesting is you have you have your fingers in a lot of different areas, whether it's business, whether it's connecting with people. We we um, bonded over um, cash flow banking. We bonded over the no knowing your numbers in your business and and just all of that. So Jimmy, First of all, thank you so much for being on. And I, I'm so pumped to learn more about solar and to share some of the opportunities um, with my audience about solar in 2021. Yeah, thank you so much. It's great to uh, great to be on the show. And it was just fun just jamming with you and connecting with you. And uh, I also learned uh, about uh, the cash flow game at a, at a young age. So I know we were kind of talking about the, the, the cash flow game. And, um, you know, solar makes a lot of sense um, just period. But for anybody who understands the principles of, uh, you know, infinite banking or of cash flow, um, it just makes even more sense. So I'm really glad to be here with you today. And, and the game that you're referencing is Robert Kiyosaki has this game called the cash flow game. And I recommend everyone go out and get it. I have been playing it with my family and, and now with the team uh, for the last couple of years. And it just helps you. It just re re. I, I want to say like maybe like reframes your brain on how to start thinking about investing, about opportunities, about getting out of the rat race. And, and I know that you, you do, you play these games, like you actually have clubs that play this, these games. Yeah. The cash flow game uh, played a, a major impact in my life. I read rich dad, poor dad at 21, um, played the cash flow game for the first time at 22. I procrastinated a, a whole year to play. Um, and then by 23, I had created enough passive income in real estate. Um, to be able to quit my job and um, and quit my job at 23. So I had really low expenses. And um, so that game really had a big impact on me. And um, I always tell at my cash flow games, uh, there is a moment where uh, in, the, in the board game, you get the opportunity to pick big deals and small deals. And uh, the whole point of the game is for your passive income to exceed your expenses. And I had an opportunity to sell one of my rental properties. Uh, my partner uh, offered to buy me out. And I just immediately said, no, I was like, no way market's going to keep going up. And, uh, and I was, was just angry about it all day long, even though he was doing me a favor. And at the end of the day, I was at a coffee shop and I, for some reason, the, the question came to my mind, what would I do if I was buying cash flow? And I was like, oh, well, I would sell it. And then I would take this money, these proceeds, and I'd put them over here and it would create this much passive income. Uh, and that's actually the, what got me out of the rat race. So yeah. Uh, forever grateful to uh, you know to the cash flow game, and um, you know so since then I've I've led many many cash flow games to teach the principles of the game um, to you know entrepreneurs and and future investors. You know what's in, what's interesting about that game, and we use a financial model which I showed you when we first met. It's it one it's what, what makes it so special is it's like it gets you a way to think of it, it like takes emotion out of your personal situation and and says like if I was playing this game what would I be doing. Or if if this is what your model looks like, this is what you should this is what you should do. And it's less about like like the 
personal feelings. And it's like that those are always there. Emotions are probably the number one thing that will get in someone's way to being successful. And so that that's fascinating. So what I would love is for you to give your your background, like who who are you? Like what 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 gets you so fired up about certain things like networking with people, connecting with people, playing cash flow, solar? Like I instead of just jumping right in, I love to get contacts for for my listeners on who you are and and what is your why. And then what I would love to do is really dive into some of the opportunities because I was telling you this before recording. I know a ton of people that are getting solar. I in Colorado, I think like every third house has solar panels. Um, someone that drives a Tesla. It's very interesting to me to think about like, it's less about, for me, it's less about the environmental things, which I'm, I'm, it's amazing, but it's more about being like self-reliant and like it's, and that control and that, that freedom that comes with that, I think is remarkable. And it's just, it's amazing that, you know, solar, the, that even works. So you can talk, you can tell I'm like out of my, out of my uh, comfort zone talking about things other than money. But with that, um, would love to hear your, would love to hear your story. Yeah, absolutely. And um, so something you just said there, I, I know that um, I was watching uh, on your uh, site about your book and you talk about uh, e equals MC squared, right? And how um, it, it's money and it's compounding and it's control. And most people's relationship with their electric company, they're on the wrong side of compounding right? Their bill's going up year over year over year, and they're on the wrong side of compounding, and they've got no control over it. Right. So um, totally, totally uh, excited to talk to you about that. A little bit about my background. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a serial entrepreneur. Uh, um, I love connecting people. Um, I'm also a, a coach. So I just really enjoy um, just, just the business world. Um, really passionate. I've got, um, you know, a 10 year old and a six year old. Um, my mom basically, you know, is a, a single mom and she uh, worked part-time instead of full-time. So she could be around me more often. And then I got to see her become, you know, 50, 60, uh, and not be able to be in a position to be able to retire. So, um, number one, I want to be able to uh, help retire my mom. Um, number two, um, I want to be able to be that type of parent for my kids without, you know, at the end of it, uh, you know, being in a place where I can't retire. Uh, and number three, want to just help other, uh, other parents be able to, you know, really just master the money game so that they can own their time and be the type of parents that they want to be. So um, because of that uh, being my passion, um, it's led me in a lot of different directions, lots of different ways that I, I see that I can add value. So uh, a project that uh, I'm a part of uh, is called Authentic Networker. And we've got, uh, I think, five different countries, I think about 70, 80 cities uh, where we have in-person networking events. Um, and it's just all about connecting entrepreneurs. And uh, we have one rule at our networking events, which is have a genuine conversation with somebody before pitching your business. So it's about really getting to know each other, not just thinking about can you buy from me, but who can I connect you with? Yeah. Um, and so that's, that's really the, uh, the authentic networker space. And then as far as solar goes, um, one of my coaching clients uh, seven years ago was knocking doors, selling solar. And uh, about five years ago, started his own solar business and went from zero to $89 million uh, last year, um, created a, a phenomenal solar company. And um, just kind of watching some of the numbers behind the scenes and saying, man, from a cash flow perspective, this makes a lot of sense. Uh, and that's kind of my connection to solar and, and, and what brought me here. I want to I want to talk about authentic networker for a second. Um, I have definitely have had some cringy moments myself in in networking on both sides, by the way. And it's 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 such a I think people kind of get turned off by this concept of like, oh, I'm going to go to a place and it's just a pitch fest and people have their business cards. But fun fact, I've I've never gotten business cards um, since we've been better wealth. Um, and it's just like, uh, it, it's, it's a little bit, it's like the people that are like the hustlers usually are the ones that are getting the business. But what resonated so much with me is your mission on, on what you have through authentic networker and, and just the, the word authentic is not just a core value of better wealth, but I just, I very much hope that people hear just how, and how I communicate, how important being authentic and real with someone is. And I just want to, I just want to number one, commend you. I can't wait to be a part of that. I know that we talked a little bit about that as well. And yeah, just thank you for that. What is the big mission? Cause I know when you shared with me the big mission for that organization, I was like, man, that's incredible. 
Yeah, our goal is to impact 1 million entrepreneurs. So to have 1,000 groups uh, across the world with 1,000 members in each of them, uh, which means we get to, to impact a million entrepreneurs and uh, really to be able to teach them uh, there's five essential networking connections that we call them. And one of those is the client connection. And that's what most people spend 100% of their time on is just hustling, trying to you know, sign up more clients. But there's referral partners, there's collaborators, there's influencers, there's supporters. So there's all kinds of other connections that you can make with people. And if you look beyond just, you know, oh, you're not going to buy from me. Yeah. Is there another business card I can grab? And instead of that, look to how can I serve this person? How can I connect them to someone? Um, it's amazing what we can do together. Two, two books to go along with that is Give and Take by Adam Grant and The Go-Giver. Um, those two books have totally shaped the way that I just view networking and serving, and you embody both of those. How can people connect with you if, they're, if they want to start a chapter, if they want to learn on how to get connected? Love, love the mission of serving a million people. Yeah, so they can go uh, right now. Um, we are not really doing in-person events. So if they want to go to authenticnetworker.com slash online, uh, we have um, a real networking online event and a virtual mastermind online event. So two different event types um, where they can go and they can, uh, they can attend, they can meet people. Um, and if you're interested uh, in you know, leading your own chapter, then um, I'm sure there's a, a way on that page where you could uh, hit the contact button and reach out to us. Amazing. Amazing. All right, man. I, uh, I got my, my pen and, and notebook out. I want to learn about solar. We, we talked about it for about five minutes and it just makes sense. And so I also am going to be a devil's advocate as well as we go through. And I just, I want to know the ins and outs you, you connected with the person that went pretty much zeroed over 80 million in sales as it relates to the solar. Some things are resonating. I know that there's certain tax benefits. And I know that there's just the idea of, of saving money. And our, one of the things that I love is, is the word optimization. The word optimization pretty much says, take what you're currently doing and, and make it better. That's what I love to do with someone's financial situation. Like, give me your financial situation and let's see if we can improve it. And when we were talking, I'm like, I can't, I think solar in the way that you were communicating it to me probably is, is, uh, makes that definition, optimi optimization, like, just highlights that very, very well. And so with that, um, assume that assume that we know nothing other than solar is what some people have on their house and they use it to use for some electricity. Um, I know a couple of years ago when, when my parents looked into it, it didn't financially make sense for them, but they may have been talking to the wrong person or they may have not been crunching the numbers the way that you and I think about numbers. And so with that, you know, lay it on us. Yes. So I, I would say that solar is very similar to, um, I think if somebody comes across, you know, better wealth, there's a couple principles that if they don't under those, understand those principles, then everything's pretty confusing. But once they understand a few core principles, then everything else falls in line. Everything else makes a lot of sense. And I think the same thing is true with solar. And so there's some places where when somebody goes solar, um, you know, they're going to be, you know, cutting their electric bill in half overnight. And there's other places where it's going to be basically a bill swap, meaning that they're going to go from having an electric bill to having a solar bill and that's it. And, and there's not really a lot of savings uh, day number one. And so I think there's, there's two kind of main principles that I would look at that really make solar make a lot of sense. Um, the first one is control. Um, and what we talked about, about control and compounding. Uh, in California, for example, uh, PG&E is, is an electric company. Um, their rates went up by 16% last year on top of 12% the year before, on top of 12% the year before, which means it's eating away at dollars that you never get access to ever again, right? The, the purchasing power and the investment power of those dollars are gone forever. And so you're on the wrong and of compounding. And so if all the only thing you were able to do was to say, let's just lock in this rate. If you think about what you paid 10 years ago, lock in that rate, right? You would be significantly better off in 10, 20, 30 years from now, because you've been able to lock in that rate. And whether it's, you know, the electric companies gouging, whether it's just inflation, regardless of what it is, the price is going up year over year over year. And principle number one is if you can just stop the rates from increasing, you're yeah. going to be better off. 
it's so funny because when you were talking, I was going to interrupt you and say, and you don't have control. And I'm like, oh, yes, that's that's exactly the point. It's like not only is it increasing, which, by the way, way higher than the two slash three percent inflation adjustment. So, number one, it's it's I'm curious why. And number two, you don't have control, like technically, other than government regulation, companies could continue to hike these things and you're at the mercy because it's like you're not going to say, oh, I'm going to not use electricity it's like okay we'll see how that how let's see how many days you last so it is kind of interesting why does it increase so much yes i mean i don't know um i've talked to somebody in texas their bill went up by 8.6 percent last year and, and they use less electric um so it seems like just about every place it goes up and i don't know if it's inflation or you know i know in california there's some some different lawsuits but basically every time the electric company you know, needs to make an upgrade to their grid, or if they need to make an upgrade to anything, guess who pays for it? It's it's the end user. And it's a very inefficient model. Uh, I heard the other day that there's some power plants that run like 6% of the year they run. And the rest of the time, they're not running at all. Yeah. Uh, because they're just running, you know, certain times. So it's just a really old, outdated, inefficient model of having one place that generates power for everyone. Uh, so just it's really inefficient. And again, the, the bottom line is that you don't have control and you're on the wrong end of compounding. That's, that's fascinating, man. So what what is point number two? Principle number two, and this is uh, anybody who understands uh, IBC or the infinite banking concept. Um, I love speaking to them because they really understand um, just this, this long term idea of money. And they understand that if you're going to use a bank anyways, it may as well be your own private family bank. Uh, and the same is true with electric, right? You're either, you're going to be using electric for, for how long? For forever. Forever. Sometimes people say until you die. And that's not even accurate. Yeah. At least taxes end when you die relatively soon after, right? With with electric, as soon as you sell your home, as soon as uh, you, you will your home to someone, the very first thing that incoming person does is they call the utility company and they set up a utility contract. Yeah. So as long as that house is standing, it's going to be using electric. Yeah. And so instead of getting caught up on, you know, maybe I can save $10 or maybe it's $10 more, or maybe I can save $50. Yes, there's value in saving money. And yes, that can compound to some pretty big numbers over time. But the real thing that you're trying to solve is every single month, if you've got $100, if you've got $200, if you've got $300 as an electric bill, that money's just getting burnt up and yep. you're forever losing the purchasing power and the investing power of it. Yep. As soon as you go solar, there's multiple ways to go solar. Um, if somebody qualifies for some of the tax incentives, it makes a lot of sense for them to purchase. When you're purchasing that, that amount of money that you're spending every month, which is either going to go to, to an electric bill or to a solar bill, the solar bill is actually paying down an asset. And every single month that you're making a payment, just like your electric bill, you're yeah. actually adding value to your home rather than having it go away to some third party electric. Totally. It's, it's, it's very much like owning versus renting. And yet the solar panels literally cash help you cash flow <laughs> and and you could say the same thing with owning a home is after 30 years you don't have that payment and the same thing with with solar um can we can we dive into the tax incentives because i it's my understanding that this is the last year that some like some like i think they're going away but with biden being the president i feel like he's signed a lot of pro solar laws and incentives and credits and so I, i'm wondering if you have an update on that yeah, so um, not a tax professional, so I can't uh, give super detailed <laughs> don't sue. advice. Don't sue Jimmy and don't, don't sue, sue me. me, all right? Exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, there is a federal tax credit incentive. Um, there are also sometimes um, you know, county or, uh, or state uh, uh, tax incentives. And um, the bottom line is that there is a tax credit incentive. It was 30%. Wow. Uh, it has gone down now to 26%. It was scheduled to go to 22% at the beginning of this year. Um, they extended the 26%. So it's never gone up, but they have extended it so that it didn't go down. 
Um, and so uh, it's scheduled right now to have uh, one more year this year and one more year of 26%. Then it's scheduled to go to 22%. And then it's scheduled to go away. And part of the reason for it is to incentivize people to go solar now. So yep. um, all of these were created, not in the Trump era, but in the uh, Obama era. And so I don't see them continuing to go up because there's a limit to yeah. the amount of energy that electric companies want to be produced from homes from solar. Because yeah. when you're going solar, you're producing extra electric generally, and you are selling it back to the utility company. The utility company is selling it to uh, other homeowners and they're making a profit and they're giving you a credit on your bill. So there's a limited, I guess, number of, of homes um, that they want to be able to take power from. So just over time, it's getting worse and worse. People are waiting for solar to get better and better. Um, I talked to somebody and they, uh, they looked at solar five years ago and they're like, man, I really thought the price was going to come down more than it has over the last five years. Yeah. Um, and I mean, number one, he's lost out on five years of principal pay down that yeah. he's never going to get back. Number two, it went from 30% down to 26% of a tax credit. Um, and number three, uh, there's something called net metering, which we won't get into a lot here, but well, yeah. Is that where you get cash flow? Yeah. Net metering is every time you send extra electric to the electric company, they give you a credit. Uh, and the credit is, is a kilowatt hour. So it's kind of like a, a unit of measurement, like a gallon of gasoline. And it used to be in California for every one extra energy of unit of kilowatt hours that you sent to the electric company, they gave you a 1.3 back in credits. Now it's one to one. There's some places where it's one to 0.75. So you actually get back less credits than what you create. It still generally makes sense financially, uh, you know, to go solar, but in this gentleman's case, he's lost five years of, of principal pay down. Uh, his tax credit has gone down and he's got to produce 30% more electric now uh, in this net metering agreement in order to break, to, to have the same you know, net effect because five years ago it was at 1.3 and now it's at yeah. 1 to 1. I'm, I'm going to save the poor drawing for all of our listeners or if you're watching this on YouTube, but the two other lines that I'm drawing are number one is also control. Because what we talked about, or that principle number one is, is if you have this, now you, you're not at the mercy of in, like your electricity going up. So which that is huge. And then the other thing is, you're like, when we talk, there's some people that qualify for the financing. And so with, with rates being the way that they are, that also when I think of optimization, I think of like, okay, I would want to look at all kinds of ways to make, to buy something. And that, that is unique. So can you talk about, you talk about financing options as well? And like, do, is that, is it usually a case by case? Is it just like the company that, that you're representing or like, talk to me about how that works and how banks look at solar? Sure. So there's three different things when somebody's go, going solar um, that, that will impact the system. Uh, one of them uh, is basically the uh, size of the system. So their electric usage determines the size their system needs to be. Um, the second is the roof type and condition, um, which is the site survey. And the third is their financials, like you just said. Um, so basically somebody needs to have a, a credit score of at least 650 or above. Yeah. Um, and the banks just have figured out that solar is a pretty good investment for them that even if somebody loses their job, even if things go crazy, people still tend to pay their electric bills. So because of that, there's really favorable rates. It is going to be on a case by case basis. Um, but a lot of times, you know, someone's getting into solar um, and, you know, they're able to get, you know, 2.99, 1.99. Um, and generally they're structuring it uh, where they've got up to 25 years um, to pay that loan off. Um, and where if they just take what they have been paying, to their electric company um, and they take that money and they and they pay instead of the the solar loan amount that they have to pay if they pay back what they would have paid by not yeah. going solar that 25 year loan sometimes seven years sometimes 15 years yeah. it's paid off significantly sooner um, and again anybody who understands uh, the infinite banking concept just pay yourself what you were gonna pay the electric company yeah. including the increases that they would have charged you yeah that's that's incredible, by the way. That's 
I mean, that's, that's remarkable. And from someone, again, that's an op- optimization nerd, I go, wow, like a bank sounds like they like it. If they're, if they're giving you uh, 25 year loans, like that's, that's favorable. They're giving you interest rates under 5%. That's favorable. And then yes, if you, if you just pay yourself the difference, uh, I mean, there's a lot of different philosophies as it relates to the best way, but yes, I, I absolutely love that. I want to, I want to play devil's advocate with you. Do, do, does solar, do they, does it depreciate? Not from a, like, I know the credit, like that's positive, but like, how long does the solar panels last? Like is it, I, it doesn't last a hundred years. I'm, yeah, maybe so, it does, I don't know. Uh, so uh, most panels today are rated at 30 years. Okay. Um, I've spoken uh, at trade shows to, to some solar companies that have been in business for 40 years that uh, said, you know, panels they put up 40 years ago are still producing today. And that's with 40 years ago tech. So I think they're going to yeah. last a lot more than 30 years. Okay. Um, but even at 30 years, uh, in all the examples that we run, we run them based on 30 years. And we say, even if like the very next day after year 30, they completely stopped working, you know, here's the return on investment um, that you're going to get. Um, yeah. the, other, the other thing is that there is what's called degradation, which means that the solar panels produce a little bit less uh, each year. It's usually a quarter percent to a half a percent per year. And um, with Apricot, the company that I've, I've partnered with, they've got what's called a production guarantee. So most companies that you work with, they're going to say, hey, we're going to put this system, we know that you use X amount of kilowatt hours, we're going to build a system size that's going to, uh, you know, offset 100% of that. And once those go on the roof, it's no longer their problem. It's now your problem. If there's shading issues, if it doesn't work properly, they're going to have like a generic warranty on it. Yeah. But if something goes wrong, it's, it's your problem. And so part of why that I've, I've partnered with Apricot and uh, with Freedom Forever, who's the installer company, is they've got a 25-year production guarantee. So they work that um, degradation right into the contract. And uh, right on the very first page, it says, here's what we guarantee it will produce. And uh, on average, uh, we produce 5 to 7% over what we say we're going to produce, just because we don't want to you know, have to go back and, and fix anything. Uh, any other company, if you had to add panels or anything like that, it would yep. be on on you, um, with, with freedom, it's not. So, um, that is one of the, one of the downfalls, uh, and that's how we've solved it. Does, does solar make sense if, if there, if net metering was off the table? So like, let's just assume, do, do most people that have solar produce way more than just their house? Yeah. So, so net metering isn't just about if you're overproducing for the year, um, what it looks like is, you know, on average, you're going to produce, uh, your solar system is going to produce 24 hours worth of electric in about five and a half hours during the day, wow. more in the summer, less in the winter, it's just an average. Yep. And then the excess is going to the either a battery or to the electric company. And then they're selling that energy. And then at night, because there's no moon solar, um, then you're, you're living off of the grid and you're living off of credits. So um, I think that battery tech just isn't, isn't there yet. It's getting there, but it's going to be um, mo- most batteries. You're, you're probably looking at replacing them in five or 10 years from now. Average size home, you're probably need eight to 10 batteries. And um, so you're probably looking at $8,000 each. So like 80 grand in batteries, uh, or you can just pay, you know, 10, 20 bucks a month to stay connected to the grid, let them be your big battery. Uh, and at least right now, in okay. most cases, that makes more sense. Okay. This is, so, so in other words, this is, this, I'm glad I asked that you're not, it, you're not, you're, you're not running your house solely off of your solar. What you're doing is your solar's coming in, you're sending it to the, like, it's, it's essentially a way for the electrician or electric company to get that energy. And then they give you they give you credits, and and you a lot of times your solar will have enough credits to keep you afloat. And then say if it didn't, you obviously the the electric like the electric company would would give you a little bit more. And I'm assuming you have to have to pay for that. But if you produce more than what you produce, then the meter company credits you, and I'm assuming you can cash those credits out over time if you're if you're constantly in the green. Yeah, it's, it's different in every different state and every okay. utility company. Uh, but generally what happens is you're going to be overproducing uh, January, February, March, April, May, 
And then in Colorado, you know, in the summertime, you don't want to yeah. die. So you're going to use your air conditioner. And so you're probably going to overuse and the net metering credits roll over. Like if you remember like uh, cell phones back in the day when they had those rollover <laughs> minutes, just like that. Uh, no idea what you're saying, bro. You don't know. No idea. Um, and so that is the process they go through. And then at the end, uh, again, depending on the utility, they'll either give you an option where they'll actually buy those credits from you, uh, or they'll just let them roll over. If they're buying them from you, they're usually going to give you, you know, a pretty crappy deal because they're making the profit. So generally, it's better to hang on to them. Um, but uh, that's how net metering works. Besides aging yourself in that last response, that was that was very clear. <laughs> I saw a YouTube video about how it used to work. That's all. <laughs> um, I mean so, the TikTok. So if I'm if I'm playing devil's advocate, sure. the, I think the one negative thing is what if everyone gets solar? We know that not like if you look at financially, majority of people are broke, so they're not even thinking like investing. Do you see that being an issue? Because if everyone does get solar, it does seem like it may not work out from a crediting perspective, but out of all the people that I know that have it, they're like forward thinking. And I just know quite a few people that just, it's just not, it's just not even on their radar. So I don't know if this is an issue or not, but do you see this being a, a potential threat as, as more people go to solar? I don't think so. I mean, um, I, I understand the concept. Um, right now in the United States, 2% of, of households have gone solar. Um, to give that some some contrast, uh, Australia added 3% of homes just last year. They're at 23% overall in Australia. We're at 2% in the United States. So there's so much room to grow. Um, and so we're just a more efficient yeah. way to generate electric. So I think what's going to happen is I think usage is going to go up over time. I think more people are going to get you know electric cars. I just think the usage is going to go up. Yeah. And I think battery tech is going to to increase over time, right. and so I think we'll have less reliant on you know one centralized you know grid that's providing everybody power, and uh, you know instead of that have more people that uh, are operating on a, on a battery system. Um, so as net metering you know over time um, gets worse and worse, and and by the way in some places like in California you get a, um, a net metering agreement that says when you go, when you go solar, they can't change the net metering on you, your okay. grandfather into it, and they can't change uh, the grid fee that they, that they charge you. So, um, so yeah, I think, I think over time batteries yeah. tech will get better and net metering will get worse. So more people will have solar with batteries. And by the way, just for the record, I agree with you. If you look at, if you just look at where our government's going and some of the things that they're making with, you know, electric cars, if you look at, Tesla being one of the, I mean, Elon being the richest person at the time of this recording, you know, and, and what he's doing in batteries. And if you just look at where the world's going, and then I'm, I'm grateful that you mentioned Australia. Um, so when I said one third of houses in Colorado, that's me over exaggerating. So don't take my words literally. And maybe I'm in a neighborhood that is more pro solar because it's a newer neighborhood. But yes, uh, not there's not one third of people in Colorado that already have a solar solar panel. Um, anything else that you want to share? I really appreciate you talking about net metering, um, the, the benefit of paying down the credit, any, I mean, credits, it, it's essentially you get, if, if the solar costs 10,000, I do want to talk about costs in a second, cost 10,000, you'd get just a 25% credit would mean you would actually get 2,500 just back in your pocket. Yeah. So it is anybody who's, who's used to being a business owner, it's not a write-off. It's not a 26% write-off where yeah. you write off 26% and then whatever your taxable rate is, you know, maybe you keep 20% of that. Um, it is a tax credit incentive. So yeah. again, not an accountant, but it, it works really like almost like a gift card to uncle Sam. So That's if right. you have a, um, you know, if you have a, a thousand dollars worth of solar, it's going to, uh, uh, to use the example you used, then it'd be about, you know, 2000, uh, or $260 would be a gift card to uncle Sam. Um, yeah. and you could just use that to offset your taxes. Huge, huge difference. I'm going to butcher this example, but a deduction pretty much means if you're making a hundred thousand and you have a 20, 25% deduction, okay. Or $25,000 deduction, I should say, then you're paying tax on 75,000 instead of hundred thousand. And so it doesn't mean that you get to save $25,000 in, in your pocket. So just, just to go on record there, credits are 
literally, I like the gift card example. They're they're a lot better than deductions. Um, and yeah, so thank you for for sharing that. Cost. How much do these things cost on average? I know with financing, there's a lot of different opportunities. I'm hoping. I mean, obviously, if people have more information, they can go to bankwithsolar.com um, and and learn out more. But I'm just this is me being curious. Yeah, so it's going to depend on those three things we talked about before. Um, one of them is the usage. Um, so, I mean, somebody could have a solar system that is $100,000. Somebody could have a solar system that is $30,000. It just really depends on the amount of usage they're using in, in electric. Um, usually, though, it, it correlates to the, to the size of their bill. So um, if it's a larger system, um, there's going to be a larger monthly payment, but normally that person's got a larger uh, electric bill. And with that tax credit incentive that you talked about, um, I, I would say about that two things. One is, um, number one, regardless of, of the amount, um, most people think about solar as a one-time cost and they think of their electric bill as yeah. a monthly amount. Yeah. If you just take your monthly amount, if you're paying $250 a month times 12, right? That's $3,000 over the next 10 years without rates going up at all, you're going to spend $30,000 anyways, just in the next 10 years. And that money's gone forever. Exactly. The second thing is with that tax credit incentive, um, you know, there's the experience if you go, you buy a new car and you drive it off a lot and it goes down in value by $10,000. Mm -hmm. Well, with solar, it's the complete opposite because of that tax credit incentive. The day that you purchase, you get that 26% tax credit incentive. If you pay your loan down with that, it means that the very first day you gained 26% in equity day yeah. number one. And for every dollar that somebody puts into home improvement, into their bathroom or their kitchen, uh, and the kitchen is usually the best place to put money in home improvement, you're usually going to get about 60, 65 cents out on, on resale. Uh, in solar, there's two different studies uh, that have come out that for every dollar you put in, you get a dollar 30 out, which is complete insanity. So from day number one, right, you're paying down the amount of your system, uh, the value of your home is increasing, and every single payment that you make from this day forward is now going into the value of your home rather than some third party company. And, and here's just another thing that rolls around in my brain. I'm not giving financial advice, um, but I am saying that if it does increase your house, and you are one of the many people that are clients of ours that are doing refinances that could increase the value, meaning you potentially, in the light of optimization, could have a, a scenario where you're like you don't even see you don't even see the true cost because of of the refinance, the the home improvement, and so that that's that's incredible. It houses with solar are going to be worth more. It's it makes a ton of sense, and yeah, that's awesome. Um, there, there was a time where, um, where when solar went on the roof, it was like a lean against the property, which made it harder to sell the property. So, you know, people who went solar five, 10 years ago have some yeah. issues that people who go solar today don't have because, because all of that is gone. Um, and, you know, just like you said, like what, what can you be doing, you know, with that money, with those dollars, and um, not in every state, but there's been some states, a lot of states actually, that even though the value of your home goes up, they have special legis legislation that says your property taxes cannot go up as a result of somebody going solar. So there's just, uh, there's so many incentives from the government for people to go solar because it's, it just makes their life easier. Um, and so they want to make sure that, you know, those aren't offset by people paying more property taxes or, or something like that. I love it. Um, can we talk a little bit about the process if someone's like, hey, I want to learn more about this? Obviously, they can go to bankwithsolar.com. But like, what is the process of what what you walk through? Because again, like I asked a pretty dumb question because I didn't understand solar. Like I didn't understand net metering and how it works. So I, now I'm that's answered. But if someone's like, I want to learn more, and where what's your guys' process? Can you walk through through that? Yeah, absolutely. So um, you just go to uh, bankwithsolar.com and in there, it will allow you to enter a little bit of information and we'll book a time um, to sit down with you either in person or over Zoom. Um, very similar to if somebody sits down and, and they're looking at their you know, financial needs, uh, you're going to ask them some different questions and, and recommend some, some products specifically based on their situation. Solar is the same way. There's, there's 13 different programs that we work with. 
um, a lot of solar companies out there, they just know one way to go solar. So they just jam everybody into a lease or they jam everybody into you know, a certain thing. And that homeowner just missed out on thousands of dollars of tax credit incentive simply because you know the solar salesperson wasn't educated. So what we do is we go through a process. Um, it does, uh, you're probably gonna expect an hour or two of sitting with somebody. They're gonna uh, get a copy of your electric bill. They'll size a system for you. Um, they'll go through and do a little bit of education uh, around how solar works. Then they'll see if there's a program that might be a good fit for you. Uh, then they'll give you an opportunity to qualify uh, to see what your home qualifies for. And then after that, um, run a couple numbers for you and give you an idea of what you could save. Um, uh, generally in that process, we create what's called a solar savings account, which says, you know, at 15 years, um, you know, based on the savings you're going to get per month uh, is going to be X number of dollars or at 30 years, the savings you're going to get is going to be worth X. And that's in a savings account at 0%. Yeah, we're not financially licensed, so we can't talk about any of that. But obviously, you'd want to save the difference in your private family bank and go back in touch with you know Caleb or whoever you're working with, um, and they can show you you know a better place to to put that money. Um, but we'll go through that solar savings account, and the next process after that um, is what's called the site survey. So uh, somebody will come out and they'll uh, look at shading. They'll look at your roof type and condition. It's going to be the most honest, uh, you know, uh, estimate you're ever going to get on your roof just to make sure that uh, there's no problems with, uh, with your roof or you need a new roof job or something like that. Um, and then they'll look at your electrical panel. And after that process is done, then we've got some more firm numbers to work with. We get back together again and uh, we give you the results of that. And if you want to go solar, great. And if it's not a fit for you, then that's okay as well. It's amazing, Jimmy. Thank you so much for walking through that. Is there anything else that you think is important to just highlight in this area? I know we, we talked about so much and I, I know this is going to be a, a, a top shared and listened to episode on my podcast and also on YouTube. So I just think there's just a lot of conversation and uh, this was just a very valuable, just a very valuable show. Yeah. Well, thank you. I love, I love talking with you. I would say the one thing I would add is if you're listening today and you are somebody in the financial services industry, um, you know I have a, a video about the top five reasons why you know financial services professionals love recommending solar to their clients. So um, go, you can go to the same website, you know, book a conversation. Um, but you know when somebody spends five dollars a day on a Starbucks, you know what that means to their life in thirty years. Well, same thing is true um, with what's happening right now with their with their electric bill. So, um, yeah, it's just it's for for somebody who understands the long term you know compound of money, they understand uh, control and compounding. Uh, solar makes a whole heck of a lot of sense, and uh, we'd love to speak with you, Jimmy. Thank you so much. I I end my show with with what I call the legacy question, and the legacy question goes like this: If this is your last day on earth, and you're with the people that you love the most. What would that last conversation be like? You can't give them anything. You can't give them solar panels. You can't give them any anything tangible, but you can give them this one last conversation. What what would you make sure to highlight during that conversation? I think I would highlight in that conversation. Um, you should really only be doing things that fit into two buckets. One is things that make you money, and one is things that make you happy. And the only reason you do column number one is so you can do more of column number two. So um, that would be the, I think the advice that I, that I would pass on is just be really present with your time, be really intentional about where you're spending it. Um, and, you know, what are the, the, the 80, 20 questions? Um, there's a book called the one thing. It's like, what's the one thing that if acted upon would make everything else uh, easier or irrelevant. And so, I love questions like that. I love uh, finding different ways where you can do something once that's going to improve things over the long term. Uh, so you can use that time to do more things you love. The one thing is one of my top favorite books, and it's a it's, it's pretty much an annual read at this point for a company. And it, it's hard to know the one thing if you're not clear on what your one thing is. If you don't know, if you can't identify what fulfill fulfillment means. If you don't understand what unlocking intentional living looks like in your own life. And so thank you. Thank you for living that out. And thank you so much for being on. Um, what is What are, are ways that people can connect with you? Obviously, they can go to bankwithsolar.com. 
is there any other places that people can connect with what you're doing? And I know like the authentic networker is another just remarkable thing that you're up to. I'm so grateful that you're in my life. And I can tell you this, you're, this is not going to be the last time that you're on, on the show. And we might have to have you on to talk about your networking visions and just other cash flow opportunities. And I have a funny feeling we're going to be in businesses together and some someday in the future, uh, just based off of our conversations. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, the two links you mentioned are, are great ways to, to stay connected with me. Um, and I'm sure that we'll, uh, we'll be back on doing this again sometime soon. And uh, people can connect with us that way as well by, by just following you and following the podcast. Amazing. Thank you so much for listening to the Better Wealth Podcast. It would mean the world to me if you could hit subscribe, leave a review, and share this with the people that you know and love.